Okay, hello, and um, for this one, I'm going to do two problems. 15.7, from the textbook uh, on electric flux. Okay, and pretty much the question that we'll be answering here is which situation, which problem has more flux or which one has less flux. Now, like we discussed in class, flux is like a fancy word for flow. In this case, a flow of electric field lines. Now, a little bit origin in that is that the strength of the electric field or the number of electric field lines is directly proportional to how strong the electric field and how much air you have. The bigger the area, the more strength. And so this became symbol for electric flux that is directly proportional to the product of the electric field strengths, just the magnitude, not the direction, and the area. Uh, but we're going to explore in these two problems how angle affects electric flux. Okay? Let's try it out. First things first. What do we give it? Try to like solve both of these at the same time. So the electric field strength is the same in both cases. Okay? And so is the area. Here it's already given for us. We don't have to draw anything. And the angle is actually the angle between the, the normal and the electric field lines. Okay, so it's kind of weird like that. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Such that the angle for this first situation is actually zero degrees. That's my symbol for zero. While for the second one, the same electric field strength, same area, But now the angle, which is over here, is actually 60 degrees. So which one do you think would have more and which would have less flux? We're going to find that out. And so that's essentially what we're both looking for in this case. Goal is the flux. Same here. Okay, formula, formula that we'll be using is pretty much the same formula, the product of the electric, the magnitude of the electric field times the effective area and the angle, pardon my sniffling, is the angle between the normal line and the E field, electric field, electric field lines. Okay, so that means for this first situation here, well the, per, the normal to the area is exactly that. I know it's yellow. So the angle in this case is definitely zero. Well here, you can see the normal is that, and electric field lines are here, so the angle between that is 60. Okay? So you can kind of tell where I'm going with this, and maybe you already know the answer in your head, but let's solve this. Just writing down the formula verbatimly, and then writing everything and the units, because the units are important. Those units for electric field times the area times cosine of zero degrees is how much? One. And so 
I simply get an electric field strength of 5 times 4. How many sig figs? should be 3. And this is the unit for electric uh, field flux. Okay? So that's pretty much it for this end. Draw a dividing line. How about for the other one? So you can probably tell which one will be greater or smaller, but let's go ahead and solve this out. Take note that when you have a cosine or a sine value, it can't be uh, bigger than one. Its value can't be bigger than one. It, it bobbles between negative one to one, but that means it's always going to be a fraction. So cosine of 60, if anyone remembers from their unit circle days, is actually one half, half off. So here we get an electric field. And as you can see, because it's tilted at an angle, like so, we're not getting all the effective area trapping the flux. And exactly, it will be a half. So it's going to be 20 times 1 half. So it's going to simply be 10. So this one doesn't take that long. And that should give us the answer that it's not squared. Where right here we had more electric field uh, flux. And here, we had less. Don't feel less. Hopefully, you're able to understand this one a little bit more. Okay, just one-shot problems. And that is pretty much it.